Good morning, dear students. Oh, all of you are fine. This is Rita Rani Guho, lecturer of chemistry, Milestone College. Today, I am going to take a revision class. Two creative questions I want to show. This is based on chapter 3, chapter 8. At first, creative question number 1. At the stem, there is two figures. You can understand it is there are two models. This one is one atom model, another one is another atom model. Now, come to question number A. What is orbital? What is orbital? You know what is orbit. Actually, what is orbit? Orbit is the path of the electrons. The path of the electrons where Electrons are moving around the nucleus. These are known as orbit. Suppose in case of this figure, this one is nucleus, this one is first orbit, this one is second orbit like this. But what is orbital? Orbital is the three dimensional region surrounding the nucleus where possibility of finding electron is highest. Highest means 90 to 95 percent is called orbital. Surrounding the nucleus, there is a region where the possibility of finding electrons are highest. This is known as orbital. Orbitals can be expressed by S, P, D, A. And orbits can be expressed by what? K, first orbit is expressed by L, K, then L, K, L, M, N. Orbits are expressed by K, L, M, N. And orbitals are expressed by S, P, D, L. These are expressed by S, P, D, L. Then another one question is given as a, mark, a question. What is atomic number? The total number of proton in case of any atom is known as atomic number. The total number of proton is known as atomic number. Then, question number B. Why atoms are electrically neutral? Atoms are electrically neutral because inside the atom, there is a center. Inside the atom, at the, at the center of atom, there is positively charged particles named proton. And around the, around the nucleus, electrons are roaming. Electrons are negatively charged particles. And the number of electron and protons are equal. Electrons are negatively charged, protons are positively charged particles. And their number is equal in case of any atom. That's why atoms are electrically neutral. Then another question you may get, when spectrum is created at atom? This question, according to Bohr atom model, Electrons are roaming in different orbit. Orbit number 1, orbit 2, K, L, M, N like this. So, whenever electrons are transferring from lower energy level to higher energy level, that time they will absorb energy. They are absorbing energy. But whenever electrons are transferring from higher energy level to lower energy level, that time they are releasing energy. For both type of transfer, a band is created on atom. This band is known as atomic spectrum. What I told, whenever they are going from lower to higher or higher to lower. For both of this transfer, a band is created on the atom. This is known as atomic spectrum. Question number C. Calculate total number of electron at third energy level determining the value of N and L in case of model 2 of the stem. See, in case of model 2, this one is first energy level, this one is second energy level. In case of third energy level, you are asked to calculate the total number of electron. This one is third energy level. This one, in this case, the name of this third energy level is 
n and n is equals to 3 n means energy level and n also known as principal quantum number n also known as principal quantum number see as it is asked for third energy level that's why principal quantum number of this is 3 energy level is expressed as principal quantum number energy level is expressed by small n and principal quantum number is also small n then come to subsidiary quantum number subsidiary quantum number is expressed by small l and the value of subsidiary quantum number starts from 0 to n minus 1 whenever L is equals to 1, that time L is equals to 0. Whenever L is, L is equals to 2, that time L is equals to 0, 1. Whenever L is equals to 3, that time L is equals to 0, 1, 2. So, for the value of N, here the value of N is 3. For the value of N, there are 3 subsidiary numbers, 0, 1 and 2. Then come to magnetic quantum number. Magnetic quantum number is expressed by small m. And the value of magnetic quantum number is plus l, 0, minus l. So for 0, for the value of l, whenever it is 0, that time it is 0. For the value of l, whenever it is 1, that time it will be plus 1, 0, minus 1. Whenever it is 2, that time it will be plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. For each value of m, for each value of m, one orbital will be found. Here, only one value of m, so that number of orbital will be 1. Here is 3 values of m, so that number of orbital will be 3. There is 5 values of m, so that number of orbital will be 5. You know that in one orbital, highest 2 electrons can exist. Therefore, in two, 1 orbital, 2 electrons, 3 orbital, 6 electrons, 5 orbital, 10 electrons. And by this way, total number of electrons are coming 18. So, total number of orbital in case of third energy level, total number of orbital will be 9 and total number of electron will be 18. Is this clear? Okay. Then come to question number D. Which model is more suitable between model 1 and 2? Analyze. Can you say which model is number 1? Model 1 is Rutherford atom model and model 2 is Bohr atom model. At first you have to identify which one is Rutherford and which one is Bohr. And you know Rutherford's atom model had some of the limitations. And Bohr, to solve these limitations, Niels Bohr, scientist Niels Bohr, proposed a new model in 1913. What was the limitation of Bohr atom model? At first, you have to say that Bohr atom model is more suitable. That means model 2 is more suitable and model 2 is Bohr atom model. Why it is more suitable? Because in case of Rutherford atom model, limitations are Rutherford couldn't give any clear idea about the size and shape of orbit. Limitation number 1. Number 2. Rutherford couldn't give any idea about atomic spectrum. Number 3. Rutherford couldn't explain the atom model in case of multinuclear atom. In case of multinuclear atom. And number 4. Rutherford compared his model with solar system. Rutherford compared his model with solar system because in case of solar system planets are always roaming around the nucleus and in case of atom electrons are roaming around the nucleus but in case of solar system planets are not planets are neutral electrically these are neutral but in case of atom Electrons are negatively charged, 
particle and according to maxwell boltzmann theory whenever any charged particle moves around anything moves around anything surrounding anything that time gradually radius will decrease and once upon a time the particle will fall down to the nucleus according to maxwell boltzmann theory but in case of atom according to the rutherford atom model in case of atom it is not electron is never falling down the nucleus rutherford could not give an explanation about this these are the limitation of rutherford but bohr has bohr gave the correction of this model bohr has given this model at based on three criteria number 2 number 2 according to energy level number number 1 number 2 according to angular momentum angular momentum number 3 number 3 according to the change of energy according to the radiation or absorption of energy according to number 1 whenever electrons are moving in its own axis that time no electron no change of energy take place number 2 angular momentum angular momentum is expressed by mvr according to bohr atom model angular momentum mvr is equals to nh by nh by twice pi here n is equals to energy level h is equals to planck's constant pi is a constant the value of h is equals to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and according to number 3 whenever electrons are going from lower energy level to higher energy level they are absorbing energy and whenever electrons are coming from higher energy level to lower energy level they are radiating energy they are radiating energy for both of the changes a band is created on the atom this band is known as atomic spectrum this is bohr atom model so that whatever was the limitation of rutherford atom model bohr has solved the limitation so obviously bohr atom model is more suitable between these two dear learners now come to creative number 2 There are two reactions at the stem. Nitrogen plus hydrogen in presence of iron powder is producing ammonia. Here, Del H is equals to minus 92 kilojoule per mole. Second one is methane plus chlorine is equals to methylene chloride plus HCl. The value of carbon hydrogen, carbon chlorine chlorine, carbon chlorine, and hydrogen chlorine has been given. Now, question number one. what is fossil fuel you know that after death man and animals human and animals dead body are mixing up with the soil and in different process 2000 years it has it is converted into converted into fuel like as petroleum coal these are known as fossil fuel and they are deposited on the ground of the earth number b what is meant by global warming you know that day by day the amount of carbon dioxide is increasing at the environment and along with the increasement of carbon dioxide temperature is also increasing why because carbon dioxide can absorb heat and also can trap heat as it is heavy that time and it is existing 
near to the surface of the earth for this reason the temperature of the earth is increasing day by day this is known as global warming another big question is why ethanol is called biofuel ethanol is called biofuel because it can produce heat by burning like as petroleum kerosene and in some of the developed countries ethanol is used as fuel with petroleum 10% ethanol is used as petroleum and as ethanol is an organic compound and the source of ethanol is potato rice sugarcane that means starch the source of source of ethanol is starch different types of starch suppose potato sugarcane rice such type of things that's why it is called biofuel now come to the next question determine value of del h in case of reaction 2 of stem at the reaction number 2 methane plus chlorine is equals to methylene chloride plus hcl to determine the value of del h you have to remember one thing at first you have to check the re reaction the given reaction is balanced or not if it is not balanced that time you have to balance this one see it is not balanced here carbon is 1 carbon is 1 hydrogen 4 but here hydrogen is also 4 chlorine there is chlorine 2 2 4 here is 4 so that 1 2 will be given over there now it is balanced equation there chlorine is 4 left hand side chlorine is 4 here is also chlorine 4 these are the values of these are the values of bond energy of carbon hydrogen chlorine chlorine carbon chlorine hydrogen chlorine now you have to show the structural formula of methane like this way carbon is holding four hydrogen atoms and two chlorine atoms are bonded together in case of chlorine molecule here two carbon hydrogen bond is breaking down and carbon chlorine bond is formed this one and this one and two hcl bond is formed now come to bond breaking energy for determining bond breaking energy you have to check at first actually how many bonds are breaking down here two carbon hydrogen bonds are breaking down two are remaining so that two carbon hydrogen plus two chlorine chlorine this bond is also breaking down the value is given 2 into 414 plus 2 into 424 that means 1316 kJ bond breaking energy and bond formation energy two carbon chlorine bond is formed that's why two carbon chlorine plus two hydrogen chlorine 2 into 326 plus 2 into 431 is equals to 1415 kJ now del h is equals to we know del h is equals to bond breaking energy minus bond formation energy is equals to 1316 minus 1514 kJ is equals to this as the value of del h is negative so that you have to say that this reaction is a exothermic reaction and in this reaction 198 kJ heat is produced or heat is evolved or heat is released is this clear so c is finished then come to d D question is analyze effect of temperature and pressure on equilibrium of reaction 1 of stem according to la chatelier principle before explaining analyzing la chatelier principle we have to know actually what is la chatelier principle you know about chemical equilibrium reaction number 1 is a reversible reaction you are finding over here two way arrow one this one is forward reaction this one is backward reaction left to right forward right to left backward so forward reaction is going to its own speed and backward reaction is going to its own speed but once upon a time suddenly the 
rate of forward reaction becomes equal to the rate of backward reaction. This condition is known as chemical equilibrium of a reaction. If a reaction reaches in equilibrium state, so year after year it can exist in equilibrium state. If any one of the controlling factor is not changed, the con there are three controlling factors which can change the equilibrium of any chemical reaction. Three controlling fa factors are temperature, pressure and concentration. If any one of these is changed so that reaction the chemical equilibrium will be diminished. To solve this reaction and to solve this problem a French scientist named La Chatelier proposed a principle. It is known as La Chatelier principle. The principle is like this. If any one of the controlling factor is changed in case of any reversible reaction whenever it is in equilibrium state. So that the system will tend itself in such a way that the effect of change will be neutralized. That means we don't need to do anything. Whenever any one of the controlling factor is changed, that time system automatically shift the equilibrium of the reaction left or right. How? Suppose come to the temperature effect of temperature effect on this reaction. This reaction in this case del H is equals to minus 92 that means it is exothermic reaction and whenever any reversible reaction is exothermic reaction it means that forward reaction is exothermic backward reaction is endothermic. So normally this reaction is producing heat. After that still if we increase the temperature so that to balance this, the reaction, the equilibrium of this reaction will be shifted into right to left. As right backward reaction is endothermic. Whenever if we increase temperature, if we apply heat, so that to minimize this, the reaction will shift into right to left. That means endothermic reaction will take place. Heat will be absorbed. By this way, we will increase temperature and system will absorb the heat and system will minimize this. This is called temperature effect. So, in this case, if we increase temperature, so reaction will be shifted into backward direction. But the target of a industry is not increasing the the target of industry is to increase the product of reaction. If we increase temperature so that reaction will be shifted into backward direction that means reaction reactants will be produced. So what to do? If we want to get expected amount of product we have to decrease the temperature. If we decrease the temperature so that reaction will be shifted in forward direction. As we are decreasing temperature so that to minimize this reaction will be shifted into forward direction. That means equilibrium will be shifted from left to right. By this way product will be increased. So what is the condition of increasing the product of ammonia industry? We have to decrease the temperature. Temperature should be decreased. Then come to pressure effect. Is there any pressure effect of, any of the equilibrium of chemical equation or not? Is depending on two conditions. Number one, for existing the effect of pressure, all the substances should exist in gaseous form. All the substances, reactant and products, both should be exist in gaseous form. Here nitrogen is in gaseous form, hydrogen is in gaseous form, ammonia also in gaseous form. So that they are fulfilling condition number 1. And condition number 2, there should be a difference of volume between reactant and product. 
how can we determine the difference of volume by mole number see in case of reactant nitrogen 1 mole and hydrogen is 3 mole so total mole number is 4 mole in case of product ammonia is 2 mole product is 2 mole we know that there are two conditions for existing the pressure effect one condition number one is fulfilled all the substances are existing in gaseous form and there is a volume of uh, there is a difference of volume between reactant and product reactants volume is 4 mole and product volume is 2 mole and according to la chatelier principle if if the volume of reactant is more than product so that in this case if we increase pressure so that reactor reaction will be shifted in forward direction that means production will be increased so that for getting expected amount of product what to do we have to increase temperature this is pressure effect according to la chatelier principle if we want to get expected amount of product we have to increase the temperature whenever the mole number of reactant is more than product this is temperature and pressure effect on the equilibrium of reaction one of the stem is this clear students so today up to this at the next class i will show you different topics thank you